Today, I am bringing you Klang Old Town. Klang, it's about 40 plus kilometers west of KL, and it's kind of a bit of a forgotten town. It's not really on the tourist trail, and when you hit Google, it's not really there. But this is quite an amazing old town. It's completely unspoiled, untouristified, and it's still going like it was 50 or 100 years ago. And I'm up here to meet Kazuto to do something else. If you watch my main car channel, you will know Kazuto. Anyway, Kazuto is a local from here. I come up to shoot some stuff with him, and then I said, we need to check out the old town. I've looked on Google, there's not much there. Can you show me around? And now we're gonna show you around and you're gonna be amazed because this is a place that no one comes to, but they should come to. So I'm gonna spend a couple of hours on this video round the old town, looking at a few things, just to give you the vibe, just to give you the feel of what this place is like. And I think you're gonna be quite surprised. And like all my videos, I'm trying to get away from the beaten trail. And this is another one that is not on the tourist trail. So stay with me for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Just look at the architecture on that building behind me. That is absolutely amazing. And I got a bit of a surprise here. We got some street art coming up. Take you around the side. And look at this. Clearly someone is remembering the heritage. These birds are actually crows. And Klang is renowned for its population of crows. Hence the crow is associated with this town. So they have put those on to celebrate Heritage Fest 2017. And aside from the big crow artwork bolted onto the wall, we have more birds here. You can see it looks like a dove. Then these look like the crows. And we have got more artwork here, more birds, and people have painted these in 2018 by the look of it. More birds, different styles, different patterns. We've got mountains by the look of it here, and birds again. And then we've got a bit of history of Klang, and then we've got some pictures that show Klang through the ages. You can see people working in the old days, colonial days, people up on elephants, people carrying things on their head, weighing scales. Then we have the port style. We have an old bridge with a bus going through. The double-decker bridge, the boats are rowing through. And here we have more port activities in the days when workers carried things on their heads. We've got a tugboat there. And then we kind of have the Chinese heritage here. We have the train system. And again, the new container port, because Klang now is one of the biggest container ports in Malaysia and in the world, but it has moved away from this area. And time has kind of forgotten the old town, the business and the commerce has gone, but it's still here. And its originality is what I really wanted to bring you on this video. And look at this pillar here with the old Chinese signs on it. Man, that is absolutely epic. And you can see it here hanging in front of his shop, the blind to keep the sun off. It is tattered and torn with the ages and that has been there a long time, liquor. Who uses the word liquor now anyway? It's an old fashioned word. And again, we've got more Chinese symbols down here. Absolutely amazing. And then these wooden blinds, these wooden slats, they are everywhere around the old town. And again, this is something that no one uses anymore. And they look like they have been there for decades. And just this pillar, the way all the plaster is long since gone, plants are growing out, we've got a broken pipe coming out there. This is history. This alleyway, there's even more street art here. You can see there's birds painted on the wall on either side of me and more of them here. There's real, so much street art, so many birds on the walls here. If we look over here, the street art here, and then you look up this alleyway here, it continues, more birds, more street art on either side. It's really amazing. Just find this area of the old town where there's so much going on. I really like this way. The window frame has been painted and all these birds. We've got so many different styles of birds on the walls. So I was wondering what this was all about. But the lady here tells me there's actually a telephone booth here once. Someone with a bit of irony has actually painted a picture where these people are on the phone so for years and years people rang their loved ones or their relatives right here and what the lady also tells me is this alleyway and the one i just walked through before with all the birds they were actually open drains once and you had to walk up 
small pathways on either side. You can see here by this faded facade and this really old style and these wicker blinds. This is a really old traditional gold shop and you can see the old wooden style and you can see it's kind of been built out with glass in recent days. Hello. And you can see all the gold here and the stools. People sit around. Again, this is a step into the past. Old traditions and crafts that are dying out still exist in places like this. This guy is repairing shoes and you can see all his thread and his soles and his brushes and his tools and thing looks like an anvil there. Right on the old main square, the biggest feature is this amazing colonial style building. So let's go in and take a look. This amazing building is actually a home now to royal ornaments, jewellery, that kind of thing. But it was actually built by the British in 1909 as an administrative headquarters in the area. Then in World War II, the Japanese took it over as their war headquarters. And then eventually it was turned into a museum. It is absolutely stunning out here. The architecture, the water features, But we're just going to stop to eat now and there aren't actually many restaurants here but this one here looks pretty cool it's handily located so we'll try and see what's going on this food looks really really nice you can see a candle burning here but i don't really know what all this food is this is wade this samosa this is curry pop this sayur vegetarian kue this sweet kesri this bread this is what inside chili okay this was mutton murtaba this chicken murtaba this biryani this was chicken curry this chicken kuruma this like fish curry this mutton curry this chicken warwar this kambing prun This is chicken masala. This beef curry, beef curry. This chicken manjurian. This sweet chicken. This I am Madhu sweet chicken. This sadi. I've ordered roti. So drinks wise, I've ordered lychee because I am absolutely coffeeed out after the rocky fuel coffee before. But Kazuto here, he's Malaysian. He's no lightweight. The coffee still goes down at five o'clock. This frame shop has actually been here for about 40 years. This lady is the owner and it was passed down from her father. And in fact, they have built their way through from the next road all the way through to here. And they are still making frames. Clearly, although time has kind of passed on from this place, there are still businesses here and they still have customers who are still with them. I love all these old wooden blinds. They're on and off round shops all the way round here and clearly they date back from a long time ago. Because this is very low and they have raised the floor over the years, some of these archways, I need to duck my head and make sure I don't whack it. There's even a hotel tucked away down a side street in the old town. This is the lottery shop. It's kind of like a bookmaker's style if you're in the West. You can see the counters here where you can buy tickets. And it's one of the few places that is actually busy. Next stop is a Hindu temple. That, that looks pretty impressive. So let's find out what's going on here. Now, Kuil, that means temple. Sri Nagara. Now I think I'm going to make a fool of myself here because I have no idea this name. Tendayotapani. I probably got that completely wrong. My apologies to anyone for that. Anyway, this temple is the oldest and richest Hindu temple in Klang. So let's go and have a look inside. And the first thing I have got to say is wow. There's quite a few temples like this in Malaysia. It's actually quite small and it all looks locked up today. So I can't really show you a lot more. That's all the information I have, but that is definitely worth coming and taking a look at that. That is very impressive.
Well, the first thing I was wrong about, when I said this looks quite small from the outside, looking through this gate, it looks really big inside and a lot going on. But today it is all locked up, nobody's about, so it's on to the next place. The big blue mosque behind me, that is mostly for Indian people. And I need Kazuto to just explain a little bit of what's going on with this. Okay, here, uh, back in 100 over years ago, this town is a very so so called is a big town in Klang. This is the main place in Klang. So here we have the it's a Muslim mosque, but catered mainly for the Indians. And because this area back then you got a lot of immigrants from India and also from China, they work just right behind there. It's a Klang River actually. That's where the port actually was back then. So we will go and have a look at the other side in a short while. So what's very interesting here is the confluence of religions within a couple of hundred meters. Behind me, we have the mosque. On the other side, we have the Hindu temple. And then we have one church there, one church there. And then in the corner, we actually have a Methodist school. So we've got all these religions coexisting within a couple of hundred meters of each other. Perfectly timed, I can bring you an old traditional house in Klang. We have just driven past this. This house looks like it hasn't been lived in in decades. The base here, the stairs, stairwell are concrete and then it's all wooden. And if we look up here, it's got this wooden porch, which is a really interesting addition because it's really high. It comes out very high and you can see it's got brick and concrete pillars. Let's walk up here. The steps are quite small and narrow and it's fairly steep coming up here, but it is locked. But we can see here, this has not been lived in for decades, but this is obviously what life was like. And once upon a time, I would say a very rich man lived in this house. Right next door to this old house is another church. I am kind of quite surprised by how many churches that there are in Klang already. I would not have expected that. And then I just want to take you around the corner because there are more really old style buildings. And here we have another building right next door to that old house that nature is reclaiming. You can see there's trees and plants growing out of everywhere. And it looks like there's massive trees growing out of the roof of this. So let's cross over and have a look a bit closer up. If I can get across the road here, and avoid the cars. This building looks really old and has not been in, lived in for decades. There are plants growing out here, if we can see in. That is really, really being claimed by nature. But you can see the wooden window frames. Some are there, some aren't. And look at that tree here. That has been around for a few decades uninterrupted. This one, the window frame is almost gone. And if we look around here, man, this building is really being reclaimed. It actually looks really cool. And again, there's nothing fenced off here. It's all wide open to the elements. But look at that, that looks absolutely spectacular. So now we're going to look at the Double Decker Bridge, one of the famous landmarks of Klang. But I've just jumped out to the car, 100 meters short, because this old warehouse looks absolutely epic. And we're right in the old Klang port area. This was a port. And this warehouse, years and years ago, they'd have unloaded things off the river, stored them in here, and then they'd have put them into trucks or lorries or horses and carts or whatever it was in those days. And this warehouse, the roof is gone. The plants are invading it again. And it is like time has stopped still. Again, look at this amazing old house shop front. Now it's a motorcycle garage, but look at all that wood and that tin roof going back decades. But now, or well, maybe it's been for a long time, this is a motorcycle repair garage. The owners tell me this garage has been here for 30 years. In fact, the owner is right here. I said I can climb up the stairs and take a look upstairs. And it's all quiet around here and it really looks like time has moved on. But these people are still here, still repairing motorbikes. And these steps are really steep. I've noticed this now in Klang. All the stairwells are very steep. You get upstairs, 
There's a lot of shoes on this balcony and here we get a pretty nice view looking out onto the railway track, looking out onto a pretty impressive building there and you can see all the new road systems and in fact if I come over here you can see that warehouse I was standing in front. Most of the roof has gone and all the plants are growing out of it. Okay, basically this is a Klang River behind me, as you can see. Uh, back then, maybe 100 years ago, this is a port. A very, very busy port for load and unloading goods uh, before the port clan was start. So they usually, they transfer all the goods here and they load and unloading here. And then there, this is the most uh, popular area back then in the 100 years old. That's where all the immigrants from China, from India, they come here. It looks like they're doing a lot of repairs to this bridge, so I haven't picked the right time, but it's still open. You can see this guy on a bicycle. He is wheeling his way through. He actually actually to open the gate. And although they're building this road, you can still go through. And that's what I always really like about Southeast Asia. They don't go over the top on the health and safety stuff. Basically, this is the first double-decker bridge in Malaysia, and it's probably the only one, I guess, although I can't say that for certain, on top went cars and down here went passengers and motorbikes and bicycles. But now the top deck is shut. They have built a massive new row bridge next door, which has invalidated it. But this is still open for bicycles and motorbikes and pedestrians to cross over. So now you can see the old steel double decker bridge and you can see the road bridge here, that's pretty massive. And another road bridge. And then if we cross over to the other side, this all looks pretty beautiful, pretty countryside style. And you can see a mosque there and a building over there. Maybe it was an office block or hotel or something once. Although the world has moved on from this bridge, it's nice that it is still in really good condition. Everything's clean and painted and looks sparkling. And you can see they're laying this pretty nice new paving right across it. So it is nice that this piece of history is being well maintained, refurbished and left for people to use and enjoy. This giant mural under the road bridge right next door to the steel bridge is absolutely amazing. It's huge and you can see the old house. You can see the buses. You can see all landmark buildings from Klang. You can see the old bus here as well, bicycles more old buses and cars, the rickshaws as well. Again, more old buildings, the fire brigade, fire engines. And here we got the train station and people going off traveling by train dressed up because once upon a time, it was a special occasion. And here we have the old port, goods being unloaded, people working. And you can see the boats on the river and this old wooden suspension bridge and the port facilities. Absolutely amazing. This place had a real life once down here. Look at these rusty chains here that are too heavy to lift with one hand. Signs, memories when Clang was a port. We've done the motorcycle repair shop and the bridge is right there. But right here, we have a tiny Chinese temple built into a huge, tree and this is tiny they have a really small shrine with a tree going up around it a lot of guys sitting here tables and chairs in gold and everything else painted red and in fact even this trunk is painted red and it's got chinese symbols on it i need to get kazuto to explain what's going on in this place this is uh we call it the datokong it's a chinese belief the land god of this malaya area and this god the name is called Ali Hassan. It's a Malay Muslim name, as you can hear, but it's only Chinese belief. Because when uh, those days, people from China, they come to Malaysia or Malaya back then, people believe everywhere have their land god. Right in the heart of the old town is the railway station. And this was built around about 130 plus years ago. And we have a bit of information here, which I'm going to read out to you. This station was built in 1890 to replace another station just three miles away. But then if we look around, the port of Klang, Klang Jetty at that time, was booming so much, particularly with tin and coffee, that they built the new Klang port, which is the big one today, the big container port. And between 1895 and 1901, a six mile extension 
was built from this station up to the port. So this station kind of had a short life really. And in fact, the old town, it really died a long time ago. So here is the railway station and we kind of got old meets modern because when you walk in, you've got all these ticket barriers where you swipe your card, real modernity in amongst all this really old architecture and over here we have the ticket counter and that has got quite a grill on it it looks more like a prison than a ticket counter this long white building with this like spiral here is a car park and that's one of the new things in Klang Old Town and it was built to serve the train station right behind me and to just help with the parking problem in this old town which is so jammed up and where no one can park easily at all and it actually kind of blends and fits quite well. And on the other side, we have some of the oldest buildings in Klang. So I'm going to take a walk up there and explore that very handily. There is a sign here telling me what's going on. And there are in fact more than 40 shop lots along here, situated in close proximity to the train station right behind. They were all built between 1930 and 1940 and it made the area one of the busiest spots in Southern Klang. Not anymore though, this area has died a death. The one thing with Klang and all these shops, they all have a covered front and they all have archways and they all have pavements at different heights. I mean, look at the step here. So I have to be pretty careful that I don't end up tripping over when I'm looking into the camera and we can see more Chinese signs on here. But it really, it's all very decayed, very tatty now. But there's still life going on. This looks a bit like a coffee shop, actually. This row of buildings was built in 1916. I can tell that from the sign up there. This old street is going on and on and on. So with that rotten building there, plants growing out of everywhere, corrugated sheeting blocking it up. And on this side, all those shuttered and empty shops. It's time to sign out. The light is fading. I hope you've enjoyed Klang Old Town. This is an old town that is unspoiled, undiscovered, and not on the tourist trail. And that has amazed me. I wasn't expecting this. Like I can say, I was in Klang today. I wanted to check out the old town but there's not much on Google and it doesn't look like there's much going on. But I am now quite impressed and I think this is worth exploring if in the area. So all those videos where they say there is nothing in Klang, don't bother coming here, pass straight through. I hope I have showed you something a little bit different.